Hi everyone, Letty here. Today we're doing a craft with me video where we make 39 Easter cards using a six by six paper pad. The collection is Hippity Hoppity by Doodlebug. So as I just mentioned, I'm gonna be using this entire Hippity Hoppity six by six collection paper pad, um, as well as this pack of ephemera. It comes with 127 pieces. I used a, around a, probably about 100 pieces of this ephemera. It's the same collection, Hippity Hoppity. And then I also have some of these branding strips that I had from a previous pack smash by echo park um, i will link that video down below at the end i said i had these left over and that i would save them to use them as sentiments on cards which is what i'll do here so we are going to assemble 39 cards together i have some atg as well as well as barely art glue that i'll use to make two different card sizes a2 and mini slim lines so first let's go ahead and tackle these a2 size cards so what we're doing here is the majority of my mats will be five and a quarter um and I am using this these three by four cut aparts first. Here's the card number one. Um, so I have a recent haul video. I believe it was uh, a cherry on top where I purchased this these three elements, the six by six paper pad of this collection, as well as the ephemera pack, as well as one 12 by 12 sheets of three by cut, four cut aparts. There was card number two. Um, so what I did was I wanted to make as many cards as I could. Um, and I knew that I wanted to make some cards with some of the bigger sentiments which are these three by four cut aparts so that's why i added on that extra sheet again i'll link that video down below so you can kind of see what i'm starting with um so these first rounds of cards are my cut apart cards which i i feel like these are the easiest cards to make um because all you do is add a background which is again five and a quarter by four inches and then you just you literally can just add on a three by four cut apart on top and you have you know an instant card um a couple things that i'm doing here is i am cutting Cutting some of my mats in half just like you see here just to add a little bit more dimension um, to just kind of mix and match some of the patterns I am also layering up some of my scrap strips behind my three by four cut aparts in different like variations um, but again most of my mats for these first few cards are going to be five and a quarter by four inches of the pattern paper when i cut down that size of a mat i am left with a essentially like a two inch strip and then a very small scrap which are those little strips um, so you'll see that that i end up using all of those scraps later on down the line um, here's another kind of card uh where I'm using uh, layering, um, and I ended up using a small card cardstock mat cardstock mat right behind the three by four cut apart, um, and I do do that again here in a second. I'll show you, and I'm literally just mixing in some of the uh, ephemera pieces, kind of here and there, just to kind of add some additional, you know, kind of you know elements or dimensions to these cards. I am making them flat for the most part, um, so that they're easy easy to mail. Um, here's card number ten. I am hoping that these will be some of my donation cards as well, um, but because it's so close to Easter, I'm assuming I'll either have to save them for next year or I'll have to, um, or wh wherever I donate, we'll have to save them for next year. Um, here's card number 11. So I'm just kind of wanted to show you, even though we're a little close to Easter, I wanted to still show you um, kind of some different ways that you can cut apart your paper, use up the supplies you have, especially when it's a six by six paper pad, uh, to make a ton of cards and a bunch of different layouts. I've mentioned it before, I don't typically use card sketches, um, but when I find a couple of different kind of patterns or you know, quote unquote sketches that work, um, I usually try to like duplicate them over and over. And so having the ephemera makes it very, very easy because you literally can just put a little bit of the pattern paper in the back um, and you can make, let the ephemera kind of do all the work for you. Um, on this next round of cards, I'm actually doing some die cut, uh, stitch scalloped uh, rectangles, which are kind of my main kind of back layer. Um, and then of course I have some of that cardstock in the very, very back um, in my five and a quarter by four inch measurement I'm already on card 14 um, so we're, you can see where this just goes really quickly and I think this video when I first started the video was uh, uh, just over maybe an hour and 45 minutes um, and I did speed it up the majority of the video to I think seven times um, so it goes really fast 
Um, but like I said, I think it just it took me maybe an hour and 45 minutes to glue everything together. One of the things that I did, though, um, the reason why it, it went relatively quick um, was because I had already pre laid out all of my kind of card designs. And that is a trick that you can definitely do, especially if you don't want to devote like hours <laughs> to card making all in at one time, you can break it apart and, you know, just take a few pieces of paper, take some effect camera, um, kind of come up with a design that you want, or you could even, you know, do some mass, you know, card assembly line cards where you make a ton of the same type of pattern. Um, and you literally could get everything, prep everything, cut everything, and then, you know, come back in and actually assemble your cards later. That's actually exactly what I did here. I actually had prepped these cards probably about a week ago. Um, and then I just, when I had a chance to actually sit down and assemble um, and film, that's when I went ahead and glued them all together. So you can see here, I'm, sh I'm showing you just a couple different, the backgrounds look the same, but a, a, several different renditions of how you can mix and match some of this ephemera. If you had stickers, you could do the same thing with stickers. I do have some videos. Um, in fact, there's even some recent where I use uh, the stickers to kind of just, you know, decorate the fronts of cards as well. You can see here, I'm using some of those little scrap strips as well. Um, and the, the six by six paper pad, what I've noticed with Doodlebug is that they tend to, have they do include little cut aparts but they're very little um and so there you can kind of see a little bitty cut apart but if you were to try to put that little cut apart as like your main focal point on the front of a card it honestly would be probably a little too small um but when you mix it with some of the uh ephemera images or what they call the odds and ends i think it works great so here's another card where you see the little bitty cut apart and then a big die cut and it it kind of just works um so again this is just the assembling of several different cards several different ways you could do it um, and this by no means is the only way you can do it um, but i just wanted to kind of show some different renditions of you know how you can put together these cards very easily um, especially if you have these minimal supplies which are the six by six paper pad and the ephemera pack um, and one thing with doodlebug is the ephemera pack is a little bit pricey that's card number 21 there it's the ephemera is a little pricey but you you get so many pieces that when you break it down kind of you know bang for the buck it actually is a really good bang for the buck um, because you get the equivalent of about four packs of ephemera in one uh, pack for you know probably seven bucks or seven you know eight bucks whatever um, so that's actually really really good price um, and and the doodle bug ephemera is just so cute they again they're odds and ends it's just so cute doodle doodle bug paper is so cute as well there was card number 22 so yeah, here we go, just a few more. We're just kind of mixing and matching backgrounds. Um, and again, I will get into actually doing some, some scrap you know, cards where I don't have a full, full background. I will get in those at the very end as well. That was card number 23. So next I'm gonna move into my mini slimline cards. So what I did was I cut down my main sheet into uh, six and a quarter by six and a quarter and then I just folded it in half. That way I could actually cut down my six by six paper into two card front mats uh, that are three by six. There's card number 24. So again, uh, all I did for the um, actual slimline card was I cut a regular piece of cardstock down to six and a quarter by six and a quarter, folded it in half. Now you can see, you'll kind of see there where the 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 borders around the mat are not exactly exactly even the top and the bottom is just a, a, a hair thicker than the the two sides um it did not bother me when i was making them but if you are somebody who's you know extremely meticulous and you want to make sure that you have an even border all the way around you could either one trim your card mat um or you could actually trim your 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 card stock just slightly different so what you would do is you would do um say for instance a card mat i mean a, an actual for your card base, it would end up being a cut that was six and a quarter by uh, six and a half, and then you would fold it, but you would have to make sure that you're folding it on the six and a half inch side. So sounds kind of complicated, right? It, it, 
I, it kind of is um, because you have to make sure that you know exactly which side to fold it on. Otherwise, it's going to end up having even more of a disparity um, as far as the border. So to make it simple, to make it cut and dry, the, I didn't have to worry about it. All I did was cut my paper down to six and a quarter by six and a quarter, folded it in half. It didn't matter which way I was folding it. Um, and because either way, you're going to get the same dimensions. And that's exactly what I did. Here we are on card number 28. So we're just flying by making these cards. Um, and again, I mean, you get a really good bang for your buck if you make the slim the mini slim lines because you'll get two card mats from the one uh, six by six paper. Now, what you can also do, which is essentially what I did here, is you can make one A2 size card mat and then you can also um, make some using the two inch strip you can layer those on the fronts of the cards and just like what i'm showing you here use some of your extra card stock that you had from cutting your your sl mini slim line uh you know card card base you can actually layer them just like that like what i'm showing you here and actually use up the scraps to make both an a2 size card and a mini slim line from one six by six paper um, I may do a tutorial later, um, you know, in, in the future where I show you how to do this, where you can take one six by six paper and turn it into an A2 size card and a mini slimline card all from that one piece of paper. Um, that's actually a great way to smash your, uh, your paper pads, um, your six by six paper pads, which we all have, um, and get a ton of cards, which are great for these, these donations that we're doing right now. Um, so that you saw that was, I think, card number 31. We are reaching the end. I ended up making 39 total cards. Um, I ended up, like, like you saw at the beginning of the video, I did have a little bit of the ephemera or what they call the odds and ends left over. Um, but what I thought what I would do is I would just mix and match some of the other, you know, older Doodlebug collections because I had actually ran out of this Hippity Hoppity collection of the pieces that I bought this year. Um, I figured I would just mix and match some of the older Doodlebug collections and possibly just make another couple of cards with those leftover ephemera or make, you know, any kind of project I want. Um, because the, the really good thing about Doodlebug is that year after year after year, they tend to use the same color palettes on their collections. Um, and so you literally could mix and match collections from different years and it just works. Um, and if you don't believe me, try it, get a couple of different collections from different years, you know, like the Easter collection from last year and this year and the year before or whatever. Um, and they mix and match really well. Um, again, those colors are all kind of the same, you know, like six or seven colors over and over. So it just, it just really meshes. There's card number 34. So, and again, I did get 39 cards. Um, I have a little bit of ephemera left, which again, I'll use in the, for future projects. I think this was actually my favorite card of the slim lines, the mini slim lines. Um, I think it's because of all the, the bright colors. I'm just really drawn to bright colors, rainbow colors. Um, and I just really loved how this one kind of came together with all of the bright, bright colors. So there was card number 35. I think that one's my favorite. Um, Definitely let me know down in the description box or in your comments below, which was your favorite card. I'm, I'm interested to see which, which style or which kind of color combo, um, you know, are your favorites. So here's one where I, I did like a little trick there. I had a die cut of just a rabbit head and then I had the die cut of a fence. And so I literally just put the rabbit head behind the fence and it looks like the rabbit's behind the fence. So I was able to hide the fact that it was just a rabbit head because it kind of looks like he's peeking from behind the fence. So I'm reaching the end. And you can do this with any type of six by six paper pad. I love smashing six by sixes. I, I think it's so much so much fun. Um, and you can actually turn out several cards or you know any kind of project that you want to do really, um, really quickly because you only usually get about 24 sheets of, of, of six by six paper in each pad. Um, so this is just a really fun way of using up what you have. Um, and again, I do recommend, you know, if you're going to try to do this project, 
try uh, buying the ephemera pack as well. Again, it's a little pricey. It's about $7, maybe $8, depending on where you get it. Um, but it is really a good bang for your buck. Um, you could also try some stickers. But, you know, I definitely recommend it because like you, you'll see here that I did not have to stamp any sentiments. I didn't have to, you know, die cut anything outside of just a few card mats. Um, so it actually goes really quick when you have the ephemera or the stickers to make your cards. Now, this is the very last card here. Um, uh, and this is uh, the 39th card of all of the cards that I made. So again, let me know which one was your favorite in the comments down below. And definitely save those little sentiment st scrap strips because they came in handy, didn't they? Here's card number 39. Look at all these cards we made. We made 39 Easter cards from the one uh, six by six paper pad and the ephemera pack. I had some, some ephemera left over. Here's just a quick recap of all of the cards, what they look like. I will be posting some pictures on Instagram um, and then probably throughout the week as we get closer to Easter, I'll post some kind of close up pictures as well. Just to kind of give some more ideas as far as how you can break down that pad and use some of the layouts for your card sketches or your card fronts. Definitely, again, let me know which one was your favorite. You can see here, we're doing several different kind of little patterns. Um, and so again, if you buy the ephemera and the six by six paper pad, you can do tons of little combinations just like I did. Um, and don't be afraid to mix and match your patterns just like you're seeing here on my, on my backgrounds. Um, I am literally, I, all I did was I cut them in half or what I did also was, um, I use some of those two inch scrap strips and I combine them together to form one full size mat for the backs of the cards as well. Here I use some die cuts for the backgrounds. You can see there the stitched scalloped backgrounds. Added in some cardstock on the back. Super easy, super quick. Um, and again, do not be afraid to take this in steps. You know, and, and if ba uh, smashing an entire paper pad, it, you feel like it's too daunting or it's too much, just pull out a couple of sheets um, and, you know, take out a few stickers or take out a few pieces of ephemera and just kind of go to town. It's, it's very fun. It's very relaxing and it's very, very doable. And this, this collection is so cute. I don't even know that I've mentioned that this in this whole video, but it is so, so cute. So there you have it, 39 cards. We made two different sizes, A2 and mini slimlines using that six by six paper pad and the majority of that ephemera pack from the Hippity Hoppity collection by Doodlebug. I believe, like I said, I bought this from a cherry on top. I'll link the video down below. I also used some branding strips. Happy Easter, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for visiting. Hope you subscribe, like this video and follow me on Instagram. Thanks and happy crafting.